Hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Medaille. As you know, I am the creative director for YouTube. Today, I'm going to present on the accessibility in the UX design of YouTube's desktop website. Now, you may be wondering why am I presenting on this? Well, to put it this way, uh, we all know that the CEO of YouTube has come out with a proposal to redesign the website. Now, I'm not sure if, no. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Medayad. Today I'm going to present on the accessibility and UX design of YouTube's desktop website. Now I'm going to present on this because the CEO of YouTube has recently put out a proposal to redesign YouTube's desktop website. And after reviewing the proposal, I noticed that accessibility is not addressed in the redesign. So I'm here to tell you about the problems that come with not addressing accessibility, as well as pointing out one example of inaccessibility accessibility in YouTube's desktop website in its current form, as well as give a proposed solution to that issue. And I will end the presentation by giving us some tools about how to evaluate YouTube's accessibility moving forward. So let's begin by talking about why not addressing accessibility is a problem. Well, simply, we stand to lose a lot if we don't address accessibility, including driving innovation, enhancing our brand, extending market reach, and minimizing legal risk. Now I'll talk a little bit more about each one of these. So the first is driving innovation. Now, if we do address accessibility, we get to innovate things such as accessibility features, that can often solve unanticipated problems and make the usability of the website better for everybody, not just people with disabilities. We get the chance to vary the interactions that are built into the YouTube website and make these interactions more human-centered and natural. But if we don't address accessibility, we lose out on the opportunity to drive innovation in these ways. Next is enhancing our brand. So if we do address accessibility, we get to demonstrate that YouTube is committed to diversity and inclusion, social responsibility, care for our customers, and workforce diversity. But if we do not address accessibility, we do not demonstrate that we are committed to any one of those four really important things. Next is extending market reach. So if we address accessibility, we will get to reach more than a billion people who have a recognized disability. That's about 15% of the world population and 73% of the marketplace in industrialized nations, which are people who are touched by disability. However, if we do not address accessibility, we cannot reach these people. And lastly, Minimizing legal risk. If we address accessibility, we get to avoid lawsuits due to inaccessibility. There are many countries that have laws requiring digital accessibility. In America, ours is called Americans with Disabilities Act, otherwise known as ADA. And those lawsuits are on the rise. In 2020, the total number of digital accessibility lawsuits exceeded 3,500. So if we do not address accessibility, we will be, I would say, maximizing our legal risk for ADA non-compliance. So now that we understand how important accessibility is, 
what we stand to lose if we don't address it, and what we can gain if we do address it, let's look into how YouTube is currently inaccessible. So I have one example of an accessibility issue, and it's the color contrast that is not compliant with the web content accessibility guidelines, otherwise known as WCAG. And these guidelines ensure that web content is accessible. So to be specific, underneath each video's thumbnail on the homepage, you have the title of the video, and underneath the title of the video, you have text that lists the video's channel, number of views, and time since upload. Now, the color that's used for this font is light gray. Specifically, the hex code is 858585. It's very small, about 8-point font size or smaller, and it's displayed against a white background. You can see in the screenshot on the right, I extracted the colors from the text that's underneath the title of the video in the thumbnail on the home page, as well as the color of the background, which is hex code FFFFFS. So when I run this with the contrast checker, we see that those col that color, that very light gray, a58585 is not compliant with the web content accessibility guidelines. This means that the contrast is not accessible to people with visual impairments. So take a look at the screenshot of the contrast checker on the right. You'll see I inputted the text color and the background color. And the contrast ratio is not compliant. It fails the contrast checker. And although it might pass for text that is 18 point or above or pass for icons, it does not pass for smaller or even just regular text. And as we saw in the screenshot before, that text is about eight point font and it definitely fails in its current state. So how do we fix that? Well, you might have guessed, and just make it a little bit darker. In this case, the lightest shade of gray that will pass the WCAG is just a slightly darker shade of gray, which the code for that is 757575. Like I just said, it'll make it compliant. Thus, the contrast will be accessible to people with visual impairments. See on the screenshot in the right how that new color 757575 against the white background creates a better contrast ratio that passes the contrast checker. So moving forward, how do we evaluate YouTube's accessibility? First, I say we need to really take a close look at the web content accessibility guidelines. As I've said, these are the guidelines for digital accessibility. It's extremely valuable because it provides specific and actionable information to ensure that YouTube and all web content is accessible according to four principles, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Also, it develops empathy and improves accessibility for users with disabilities. Another way we can evaluate YouTube's accessibility is using a contrast checker. In this case, we can use WebAIM's contrast checker, which is just a website that checks a website's contrast, similar to how I showed you in the example of YouTube's issue and accessibility. So this is valuable because we can check whether YouTube's contrast is compliant with the WCAG, and it also develops empathy and improves accessibility for users with visual impairments. Well, I hope that this helped you realize how important it is to address accessibility in YouTube's website. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Please email me any thoughts and questions that you may have at the email address you see below. Thank you so much.